joined now by investigative reporter Travis Lupik, and he's been working on a series on mental health in Vancouver and the police response to it. So Travis, maybe you could start by outlining what questions you were trying to answer at the outset of the series. Yeah, it's, um, it's sort of a one-year on piece from events that happened in September 2013 when the Vancouver police uh, joined the mayor of Vancouver to uh, call for assistance providing for the uh, severely mentally ill in Vancouver. Uh, they found that, uh, we found that uh, while most people are uh, taken very good care of in Vancouver, there's a very small group, uh, well, a few thousand people, of severely mentally ill people uh, who sort of slipped through the cracks. Uh, these are, uh, you find a lot of them in the, in the downtown east side. Uh, they also have related addiction problems. So the questions we tried to, to answer were how they're being cared for, how they're not being cared for, how money's being spent uh, to care for them, those sorts of things. And w what were the, the key things that you've discovered in the course of this research? It was really, um, perhaps not surprising, but very shocking um, the, uh, how uh, this problem is getting worse every year, it seems. Uh, the VPD has recorded a five-year spike in apprehensions, um, involvement with the mentally ill, um, and the Vancouver hospitals, uh, St. Paul's and Vancouver General, have noticed the same thing, that they're deal dealing with the mentally ill people uh, in, at points of emergency uh, more every year. And how would you rate the police response to this mental health crisis in the streets? I actually think they deserve a lot of credit. They, they do a, a pretty good job. Um, they don't love the fact that they are often the first responders for mentally ill people, but they've sort of accepted it um, as a reality. And so this is a big part of uh, their, um, their training when they first uh, become police officers. Um, I, you know, I asked, um, I asked a professor in Toronto who sort of looked at the Vancouver situation, uh, how he rates the Vancouver PD on mental health and why uh, he thinks they're doing so well. And he said, well, they are doing very well, probably the best in the country, but that's because they came from such a low point, they really had to learn from their mistakes. <laughs> uh, but they are doing well now, he says. Yeah, one of the things you interviewed a, a psychiatrist in the Washington area, Fuller Torrey, who looked at our mental health system, and particularly the, the approach to chronically and severely mentally ill uh, many years ago. What, what did he tell you about how things have changed? Yeah, Dr. Torrey was uh, very interesting because he's actually, he's in New York now, um, and he did a comprehensive report on mental health care in Vancouver in 1993 and said that uh, this jurisdiction, our city, was probably the best uh, on our entire continent caring for the mentally ill. But he ended that with a caveat. He said that it looks like services could be reduced in the near future, and he warned against that happening. And uh, ever since 1993, he's kind of kept an eye on the situation here and has a sort of had fond uh, place in his heart for Vancouver and was really sad to learn that uh, his warning, his prediction sort of came true, that services were cut and that uh, subsequently a lot of people have fallen through the cracks. And how important is housing in this overall equation? Probably uh, the most important factor there is. Uh, new studies are showing every year now. Um, the Mental Health Commission of Canada uh, produced what they described as the largest homeless uh, study of homeless populations ever conducted in the world uh, through 2011, 2013, I think it was, and then later uh, filed a comprehensive report on that finding if you give people a home first, uh, even if they're difficult to house, um, down the road, once they're stable in a warm place to sleep, uh, you can really more effectively deal with mental health issues, employment, training, all sorts of things. So if you get people in housing first, you're going to save a ton of money, uh, hospital and police uh, bills. And just in closing, what more needs to be done in your estimation? Well, um, the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Justice, the police, everybody's sort of working together uh, to help care for these people. The way they're caring for them is they wait for a point of crisis and then they, they intervene at, at that time, uh, which is really expensive because then you involve emergency rooms and police officers. Um, I think if some of that money were shifted to prevention and uh, early interventions, uh, we'd help those people a lot more effectively and we'd also save taxpayers a huge amount of money. Okay, that's terrific. Thank you very much, Travis. And in a moment, I'll speak to Michelle De Silva about Best Chef in Vancouver.